Everybody's highly requested video is finally here. We have a hitting tips video for y'all. I don't want to waste any time in this video, but if you could really just hit that like and subscribe button for me, it would mean more than you could imagine. We'll have more videos just like this coming just your way. But anyways, let's get straight into it. We are going to be going from a beginner level all the way to what can make you the best hitter at a comp level. So I'm going to cover every base and trust me, even if you think you are the best hitter, I suggest watching through all levels because I have something that can help you even if you're just starting off or even if you're a good player and you may just not know it yet. So let's get straight into the video. First off, everybody does this, so I'm going to go over my settings real quick. Let me just have my face cam for you guys, and you guys can all see. Hold on one second. Alrighty. All right, so now you guys can see my settings. So I'm going to be practicing on Legend today just, as, uh, just to show you guys the highest difficulty. But first off, buttons input, most important. you got to be able to press X as for all your swings, maybe even circle if you're in a really desperate position. But most off, you're going to be swinging with X. Hitting interface needs to be zone. There is no other way around it. Um, it, it zone gives you the most control, and, and directional just lets the game decide what they want for you to do at the plate. But zone, if you put the PCI on the ball every time, you're going to be okay. PCI anchor on free. It is regularly on preset. I'm going to talk about that at one point in this video. But free, trust me, put it on free, and we will talk about it, all right? Um, PCI anchor, keep it on. Um, w once again, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, play coverage indicator obviously needs to be on. PCI, this is personal preference only. For me, yellow diamonds 50 has been the best for a competitive experience. For Battle Royale, I've been enjoying just using the bat. Once again, nothing wrong with using Wedge or Starfighter or Basic, anything. But my biggest recommendation is using either one or both of these two. Um, staying away from the outer. I really think the outer just makes your eyes too big you just see too much that you want to hit um keeping it in a smaller region is usually helpful but if you like the outer who am i to say color once again preference um you see very commonly yellow black and white being the colors used for the most part um outside of a few people so those are probably the colors you want to stick to i find blue looks really laggy and choppy especially if you're on a ps4 so do do not use those those um Transparency, once again, up to you. I like to keep it out of my eyes a little bit, so 50 to 40 is usually where I sit. Um, I can get to 60, but I typically stay around 50 or 40. Um, but a lot of people like 80, 90, 100, they like to see their PCI. Fully preference. I can't say that enough. PCI fade out, once again, preference. Uh, vibration, I suggest having off. I have it off on my PS, so it doesn't matter what the setting is in-game. Uh, that's for pitching. Defense. Pinpoint. So far? Pinpoint has not been as uh, influential as it usually is. I still suggest Pinpoint, but Pure Analog may be making a comeback here in the coming weeks. Uh, pitch Trail just going to be on. Um, button Accuracy needs to be on on defense. Even if you're making those throws bad, you got to practice them in practice and get your throwings out because then you can make a good throw every single time. Um, drifting Ball, once again, that could be the blue line if you like. I like the Drifting Ball. Uh, that looks like it's good there. Cameras. Strike Zone. Or strike zone high is the only two cameras I suggest using. If you look across the whole competitive scene, everybody hits on either strike zone or strike zone high. And majority is strike zone. So I cannot stress enough you need to be on strike zone or strike zone high. There's no other way around it if you want to become the best player you can be. Pitching view. This one is pretty It's pretty much up to you. I mean, I pitch on strike zone. I just like to see the ball the same way I would see it when I hit it. Um, once again, these views up to you uh i don't know if there's anything in here that i pro i certainly uh have any different than what the game would have loaded me up with uh, i'm just gonna make sure don't think so and yeah that's about it so there's the settings uh, i'm gonna get my face cam back here and we will continue on with hitting tips so starting off first and foremost for beginners I'm going to talk about what you should do with your PCI first. So you can see I can move this PCI all around the strike zone wherever I want to put it, hitting with Boba Shadow and Legend. What should you do first pitch? You see a lot of people swinging around like this. Is this a good idea? I want you to do whatever feels natural to you. If sitting here like this and not moving it feels natural to you, do what feels natural. Don't try and copy people's movement. Just do what feels natural because at the end of the day, it all comes down to timing when you're hitting the baseball. Now, what pitches are we looking to hit? This year specifically, pitches on the black here, on the black here, anywhere on the black or on the corners of the plate get less velocity when you hit it than if you hit a pitch in any of these middle quadrants. 
So more than ever, we need to look for pitches that end up in the strike zone and really in the strike zone because I promise you hitting these pitches is not like it has been in past years. They get absolutely no velocity, all right? So your next question is probably, well, how do I get there? Looking for pitchers patterns is the most important thing. When you are playing online, I guarantee you somebody is going to become predictable enough to the point where you are ready for a pitch that he is going to throw that he's been repetitively throwing. So patterns we want to look for specifically, 00 counts, 10 counts, 21 counts, 12 counts. Those counts are the main counts where people become extremely predictable. 1-2, if they're throwing sliders down and away, they're going to keep throwing it. So if he's throwing for a ball a lot, you're either going to look to sit back or just kind of take the pitch, to be honest with you. Um, 1-0 is a really predictable count as well. You get them fall behind, and they typically give you like a fastball over the middle um, to get back into the count. So those are the pitches we want to look for uh, and, and when. Now, early in the count, 0-0, 1-0, 2-0. Perfect times to sit on a pitch. And I'm not saying just swing for that pitch, but if you think that, okay, I'm getting late on sinkers here. So he's probably going to give me a sinker. 2 0, sell out for it. If you flail at the baseball, a strike is a strike. But if you connect with it, it's a run for you. So the strike to run um, trade off is perfect. So 2 0, who cares if you flail at a pitch, right? If I'm looking for that sinker and I swing through it like that, whatever, it's 2 1. What does it make a difference? I sold out for the pitch I wanted. I didn't get it. It is what it is. So really, like, putting yourself in the mindset of ready for one pitch, especially if you're struggling, is really important genuinely when you're in hitter's counts. Not when you're in two-strike counts. I don't think you should be like, oh, I need a sinker up and in here and flail if I don't get it. But just, like, hitter's counts, bro. Get ready for that pitch that you think you're going to get. And if you don't get it, don't be discouraged. But don't. The last thing you want to be is 2-0, and he gives you that sinker. And you get jammed and you pop it up. It is the worst feeling. So you have to convince yourself that you are ready to hit. Now covering another point I talked about. This year they have added the free anchor. And I told you to put that setting on in settings. And here is why. So the free anchor allows you instead of having the dots. I can anchor anywhere around the strike zone. Look, I'm anchored down and away. I assume you can see, I'll turn my PCI uh, to a wedge. Just so you guys can see my PCI. I can anchor quite literally anywhere in the strike zone. I can anchor here. I can anchor here. I can anchor here. I can anchor in the middle of the zone here if I want. I can anchor literally anywhere. So how does this come into play? Well, I told you 2-0. If you think you're going to get that sinker in, why not? If he is throwing that sinker right here, why not anchor here, right? Why not prepare yourself as much as possible, especially on higher difficulties? So look, 2-0, if I'm like here, I'm looking for a fastball right here. This is what I'm looking for. Doesn't give it to me. Whatever, right? But if he throws that there, I'm going to be all over because I'm already anchored there. So now, 2-1, if I'm like, man, he's been throwing these pitches here and I've just been slamming on them. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, if I've just been slamming on them and I can just kind of sit my PCI here if I want to. So I don't think it's good every pitch. But if there's a certain count in a certain situation where you're getting beat by a pitch and he is repetitively throwing that pitch, I really think the free anchor can come into play. I wouldn't use it on a count other than a count with zero strikes in it. Once you get to one strike, you're kind of looking for a, a one pitch to drive. Um, it's not as good to be selective, um, especially not two strikes. I really don't think you should be free anchoring. Um, but yeah, th that's the free anchor this year. So I think it could be a very useful tool, especially against guys like Roki Sasaki on Legend, where maybe he's throwing 103 past you up and in, and he is just repetitively throwing you 103 right here, and you're just looking for it. So try out the free anchor, see what you think of it. Uh, it may not be for everybody, but I think it could be a useful tool for some people who are maybe getting beat a, a lot by pitch high pitch speeds. Now I'm going to go over my approach a bit, because if we see a lot of clips of me hitting as a whole, especially in a tournament I just competed in yesterday, you see a lot of hits that I get are to right field. So is that an approach or is that just reaction? Let's talk about that for a minute. So I'm going to roll some clips in the background while we talk um, of just some hits I got yesterday. And you're going to see a lot of them go to right center, right field with my righty batters. So I'm staying on the ball a long time, especially cutters, but... Is that because of reaction or is that because he's uh, my pitcher or sorry, the pitcher is becoming really predictable. So for me, a lot of it is actually me looking for that cutter. Um, so with guys like CJ Crone against Rebel, I got cutters that were simply just um, down and away right hand side of the batter's box. 
That is where I was looking for. So all day, I knew when they were going to pitch Sasaki, they are going to pitch Darvish, they are going to pitch Dibble, they are going to pitch anybody with that cutter righty-righty, I knew I was going to get it at some point because they will never just spam me inside forever. So I know I'm going to get pitches outside. Um, especially in my second series against Rebel, we put up a 10-run inning, and all I did was hit outside pitches. You're going to see uh, Hank Aaron had a home run to right field. Crone had two home runs to right field. Um... I think Kondo had a hit through the left side. Like, we were going all to the opposite field. So is that an approach, or is that just what I am looking for? For me, I was sitting cutter, like, for most of the day, to be honest with you. Um, I got beat by a lot of inside pitches, but who cared? Because I knew they were going to go back out eventually. And when they did, we punished it. So for me, it's just knowing or thinking ahead of what the pitcher's going to throw, not selling out for it as much as I was talking about early in the video, but just thinking ahead of what he's going to throw. 2-1 here. He's probably scared of throwing me a good strike, so he's probably going to go cutter away, fastball away, something away, because he doesn't want to give me something inside where I could be sold out for, right? So it's really thinking ahead and using your mind, because the, the moment that you get caught behind is, is and you get beat by every pitch, you're just giving him free strikes. So I really want you guys to try and think ahead, and and it's, it's not as much of an approach as it is just thinking smart baseball. If it's a 3-0 count, you don't got to swing. You know what I'm saying? Take away. Because if he tries to dot you, he misses his corner. Pinpoint's really tough this year. Um, it's tough to get the pitch where you want it. So walks are pretty common, I've found. Um, you really can't hit the corner you want to. So 2-1, 3-1, if they're going to lay one in there, man, be ready to hit. Now I'm going to cover something that I get asked probably the most in my chat. Where does your thumb sit? Um, where do you look when the pitcher's throwing the ball? How is your monitor adjusted? Those type of questions. Um, I tell everybody in my chat the exact same thing, and I'm going to tell you guys all this right now simplify hitting it is not rocket science but we all make it seem like it when we're slumping so it's not the way your monitor is angled it's not the way your thumb's sitting it's not how hard you're pressing on the stick it is simply putting the pci this thing yep this thing putting this on the baseball it is not as complicated as you make it but as soon as you start trying to look at different parts of the zone, not letting your eyes and your brain connect with each other, and trying to overthink it is where you run into the most problems in this game. This game is purely reaction-based, truly. There is so much reaction that goes into it, and when you start thinking about different things, you are removing that reaction aspect because you're already trying to overthink it. So, for example, people tell me, oh, how hard are you pushing on the stick? So, if I try and push on the stick extra hard here, I didn't even move it, bro, <laughs> because I was, I was thinking about how hard am I pushing on the stick instead of thinking, how am I going to put this thing on the baseball? So simplifying your approach is genuinely one of the most uh, important things you can do. Stop thinking. Thinking is hurting you. Unless you're thinking about what pitch maybe could be coming next, you are really hurting yourself about what you're doing with your thumb, what your eyes are doing, what like the way your monitor is pointed. It's just killing you. And I know we've all done it. I know everyone who's watching this video, including myself, have been like, is my chair angled right? Like, am I off on the... It's not that, man. It's really not. So simplifying and just forgetting about everything, all I'm doing is thinking, I need to put this on the baseball. And I did. You know, all I got that's all I got to do is just think about, I need to put this thing on the baseball that is thrown. I'm not thinking about where I'm looking. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing with my thumb. Look, all of this stuff, this pre-pitch movement that I was talking about at the start, this is all natural. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just doing it naturally. All of it is just, I'm moving it around. It's probably inconsistent every time. I've never paid attention to it. But all of it is just movement. Sometimes I don't move at all. Sometimes I just kind of do like a little bit of this, like a little bit of jumpy. Um, really nothing, man. So I promise you, nine times out of ten when you guys are asking me, what are you doing with your thumb, all this stuff, you're just overthinking it. Now, I know this has been a lot of talking, but I'm going to show you guys something here in batting practice. I think it's going to be really crucial this year. So if you are somebody who is like, man, sinkers beat me ready, ready. Turn sinker up, turn all this shit down, okay? So we have just sinkers. I want you to put here... And here, this is the two key locations, okay? One's a ball, one's a strike. I want you to take your hand off of the X button. Just have your hand on the PCI stick. You're not swinging. And I want you to track this pitch. And when you see it, tell yourself it's a ball when you see it's a ball. If it's a strike, tell yourself it's a strike. Try and tell yourself it's one of those two when you read it out of the hand before uh, before the ball gets caught. So strike. Say, see, I'm, I'm reading it early. I'm trying to call it out before the ball gets into the strike zone. So I'm going to look again. We're going to see what happens here. Strike. There. We're getting strike before. So we are picking it up. I want you to do this for about three to four minutes, okay? I know it sounds like, oh, am I wasting my time? You're not wasting your time. Strike. 
you want to know as soon as possible if it's a striker ball and if that's the pitch you're struggling on you need to pick it up quickly especially a pitch like a sinker so now call um now incorporate swings into it after three to four minutes pretend i've done three to four minutes all right we're gonna incorporate swings into it but i do not want to swing at a ball ball that's a ball can't swing at that so that's what i mean you need to work on that and and tone it in your mind that you need to be ready to swing but if it's a ball you need to lay off right there's a strike you know, that was a strike now okay we're gonna we're gonna add into another element of it now now if you're like well i only struggle with sinkers if it's sinker cutter turn the cutter up we're gonna keep middle away and middle in this is gonna be a mix of sinkers and cutters now right so you could get a cutter inside and a sinker outside this is really gonna get your brain going once again don't swing just track it out of the hand ball all right, that was a strike. I'm, I'm an idiot. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a really good exercise for you because you're, you're being forced to track the ball early and pick up whether it's a ball. You're not guessing. You're just looking and tracking. I, I, I See how gross that is, man? Because you think, oh, is that the sinker inside? So do this for a while, man. I'm telling you guys. I can't tell you how many times I've sat in custom practice already this year just doing this. All I've done is sat, sat in there and tracking the pitches out of the hand because it's really helped me hit. And you can sell on the cutters outside this year, man. I am nailing them because I'm picking them up out of the hands so early. So let's do a little bit of a recap here. We have gone through our settings. We have gone through the PCI starting movement or how you start your PCI. We have gone through what pitches to hit. You need to be hitting pitches in the middle of the strike zone. We have gone through the free anchor. I've showed you guys how to incorporate the free anchor into your game. Uh, I've shown you, I talked about my approach, maybe selling out early, getting ready for that pitch early when you're in a hitter's count. Uh, I've told you about how I've, I'm hitting and how I'm thinking ahead. Uh, I've told you guys about the patterns that the pitchers may fall into and just simplifying your approach. We've talked about how custom practice can incorporate it. And honestly, when you play this game consistently, you're going to be playing at your best. When you're taking breaks two, three days off, you're going to realize that there's a lot of inconsistency in the way you're hitting. The more you play this game, the more often and more successful you're going to be, whether it's ranked seasons, battle royale, events, whatever difficulty. So I know this was a, uh, a video that everybody has been waiting for. I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanted to bring it out after I had been playing the game for a bit. And uh, yeah, you guys are going to want to stay tuned on YouTube because we're just going to have more and more fun content pumping out. Make sure to follow me on Twitch so you can catch all the action live. We stream daily and it is a blast over there. So hit that like, hit that subscribe. And without further ado, I'm out. Peace.